till now we have been looking at free oscillations and then last time we looked at uh, forced oscillations okay and we talked about resonance and what the solution is at resonance and we saw that the amplitude grows uh, with time linearly and um, the approximation of small oscillations will break down um, we have not included any friction till now in our discussion and clearly in any real system you will have friction present and that's what we want to take take up today so generally friction will be present and uh, when our oscillations are small typically the velocities will also be small and um, usually the damping forces which are acting on the system the frictional forces which are acting on the system these forces will also be proportional to the velocities okay so in the limit of small velocities the frictional forces which will act or the generalized frictional forces which will act um, they will let let's call them small f uh, they will be of this form proportional to the generalized velocity q dot which we assume to be small and then you have a constant lambda which is positive so that the force is opposite to the direction of motion of the system at that moment okay and if i include this then the equation of motion of um, the system or the oscillator becomes the following so you have earlier you had q double dot plus omega square q equal to zero that's what we had originally where omega square is the characteristic frequency of this system but now we are saying we have an additional term which is lambda q dot okay so if i put lambda equal to zero meaning i remove all the friction then you will just have q double dot plus omega square q equal to zero and the system will oscillate at its natural frequency omega and we want to know now what happens if such a frictional force is also present okay that's what we want to talk about today so as last time we were we are looking at a one dimensional system so q is characterizing that one dimension and later we'll take up a multi dimensional system and uh, use these results to say something there okay now you cannot take the solution a cos omega t plus phi here that will not work okay if you put it in here in this equation it will not work okay so this doesn't work um because this is let's say cos i take double derivative i get back cos again but a single derivative will give me a sign so this is not going to work and a simple trick will make our life easy so instead of choosing q as the coordinate which is real i go to complex um, variables and i say i define a new equation z double dot plus lambda where lambda is still the same as above a real quantity um lambda z dot plus omega square z equals to zero okay now if i take the real real part of this equation okay then this is what i will get so real part of this complex equation will be my original equation so if i can find solutions of this i just take the real part of the solution now this one is good because uh, if i know that z equal to e to the r t will be a solution as far as the time dependence is concerned and um this will work because no matter how many times you differentiate z with respect to t you still get the z back in addition to some some factors which are not function of time okay and that's why this trick is going to work so let's substitute z equal to a which is some constant okay e to the r t in the equation okay and this uh, when we substitute this in here i get immediately r square which is what you get by taking differentiation doing differentiation twice plus lambda r a single derivative will pull out an r plus omega square and 
a completely cancels out because each term has an a so this is what we get and this is a quadratic equation which has two roots uh, let me draw a line here Okay. Okay. So as I said, this is a quadratic equation. Quadratic. So I have two roots, which I call R1 and R2. And R1 is minus lambda over 2 plus lambda square over 4 minus omega square okay and r2 is minus lambda over 2 minus lambda square over 4 minus omega square okay these are the two roots we have and in general the solution will be the following your z will be some constant a1 r1t plus a2 r2t a1 and a2 are also complex and to get my q i should just take the real part which is same as taking z and z bar and adding them up now there are three possibilities as far as the roots are concerned these two the argument of the square root could be positive, negative, or zero. Okay, these are three possibilities. So let's look at these three possibilities in turn. So possibility number one, which I will say um, lambda square is greater than four omega square. Okay, that is a possibility. And this is the possibility of, as you are about to see, it, it describes over damped motion. Okay, let's see why, why this possibility leads to over damped motion. Okay, so this thing in here is positive. Okay. Now, as you can see, that... Um, the r1 and r2 will always be negative this one is negative r2 is negative anyway it's clear you have something in the square root uh, two negative numbers added it's it's going to be negative and you can also convince yourself that this is also r1 is also negative okay the uh, i mean the the limit in which the limiting value is zero so when omega is really really small let's say you can drop omega in comparison to lambda square over 4 okay in that case you just get minus lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2 that is 0 but if omega is anything but 0 this will be a small positive number lesser than minus lambda by 2 so you'll get a negative quantity okay so in that case um, let me write down here for this case both r1 and r2 are negative as i mentioned just now and clearly the solution q is an exponentially decaying solution because you have e to the minus r1 t some constant here Sorry, I, I should not have put a minus here. That is what is confusing me. So Q is A1 e to the R1 t plus A2 e to the R2 t and both of R1 and R2 are negative. So as time goes on, the amplitude 
decreases exponentially okay so clearly there is no periodic motion here so you start your uh, system at some value of q and as time progresses it just damps out to zero so this is an over damped motion okay now second possibility is that what you have in the square root vanishes so lambda square over 4 is omega square let's look at that possibility now and possibility 2 is lambda square is equal to 4 omega square and we will call it critically damped case let's see what happens in this case so in this case our r1 and r2 are both minus lambda 2 by minus lambda over 2 okay let's write so let's find the solution corresponding to r1 it will be just the um, the general solution let me write okay so the general solution will be the um, linear sum of solutions corresponding to r1 and r2 and corresponding to r1 you get e to the minus lambda t with some constant a1 okay and because the roots r1 and r2 are degenerate here they are repeated you know that the second solution will be t times e to the minus lambda t okay you you get a factor of t here as you know from your study of differential equations and of course i should include another constant and add them up to get the uh, solution for my entire system so you can take real part of this and that will be your solution but anyhow you see that this is again a non oscillatory motion okay it's not i mean not non periodic motion of course it is not oscillatory also but this is a non periodic motion and also it is damped exponentially let me write here in this case also okay so this uh, first case was non periodic meaning the coordinate q never comes back to its original location and it's also not oscillatory things are um, not oscillating as you will uh, as you see here the same is true here also this is also a not non periodic motion and also this is not oscillatory not oscillatory okay next let us look at the third possibility which is when um, the argument of the square root is a negative number okay and that one we will call um, so you have 4 omega square less than lambda square and this we will call damped oscillations so as you can already see in the name i am expecting that we will get oscillations unlike the previous two cases where there were no oscillations at all okay so here what we have is your r1 and r2 if you see here okay if uh, i call this quantity as the negative of this quantity as omega d okay i get two complex conjugates so your r1 will be minus lambda over 2 okay and i'm defining lambda square omega square minus lambda square by 4 to be omega d so what i'm saying is omega square minus lambda square by 4 i define this to be omega d okay with that definition what do i get i get r1 to be minus lambda over 2 let me put a plus i omega d 
okay so plus i omega d and my r2 will be minus lambda over 2 minus i omega d i should have put a square here okay so these are the two complex conjugate roots and the solution is easy to construct now you take the z to be um, c1 some constant i omega d so i have put this piece i will uh, eat t, t and minus lambda over 2 t i will uh, keep outside as a factor so let me first bring this one c2 e to the minus i omega d t and then i have e to the minus lambda over 2 t so these are this is the most general solution okay okay that's good now i can write down the z bar because that's what i need to add to get the real part so z bar will be c1 bar minus i omega d t plus c2 bar e to the i omega d t and this remains the same and if i add these two up i get q okay i'm not worried about factors of two because that i can always absorb in the constants so that's why i'm writing that q is z plus z bar okay so if i add these two up I get the following so I take this piece and combine with this piece because they have both e to the i omega dt and I get c1 I get the following I get c1 plus c2 bar okay e to the i omega dt then you get these two pieces and you this is c1 bar plus c2 e to the minus i omega dt okay and this overall factor okay the, the, note this factor is giving an exponential damping as time grows this this is exponentially decaying anyhow so now um, i will define c1 plus c2 bar these two constants the sum of these two to be a e to the i alpha okay where a and alpha are real and then my q becomes e to the i omega d t plus alpha that's correct and you have a a here that's correct and plus this is just a bar right? this is just complex conjugate of sorry um, com not a bar um, this is just complex conjugate of this which means you'll get for this piece you'll get a e to the minus i alpha so I get a e to the minus i omega dt plus alpha okay minus i alpha so i have taken out the minus sign that's why i get a plus in here okay that's fine <coughs> which is nothing but uh, so i can write down my solution q as a cos omega dt okay plus alpha e to the minus lambda over 2 t that's our most general solution um, I mean here I'm not again absorb all the overall factors of 2 in the constant a okay so this is the most general solution now again this is not a periodic motion um, not a periodic motion Okay, meaning q 
never comes back to its original location because of this this factor okay as time has passed because of this the amplitude would have decreased okay but this is an oscillatory motion because of the presence of this cos thing okay so the pendulum or the oscillator is indeed uh, oscillating about the equilibrium but the amplitude is decaying with time okay and this we have encountered also uh earlier also note that the oscillator is uh not oscillating with the frequency omega which was the natural frequency of the the oscillator uh of the free oscillator let's say but it is oscillating with the fre new frequency which is omega d okay and where omega d is uh this quantity here and clearly it is smaller than the omega there is a minus lambda square by 4 let me write these two things down so one in the in this case where i have damped oscillations i do have oscillations but it is not periodic so the motion is not periodic okay the oscillator never returns to its original location because of that exponential damping factor but it is oscillatory it it is oscillatory motion okay and also the frequency of oscillations is not omega but omega d and omega d is less than omega okay recall omega d square is omega square minus lambda square by 4 i believe lambda square by 4 that's correct okay that's good um next what we should do is we should look up uh, look at um a system which is both experiencing a damping a damping because of its environment where it is for example and a pendulum could be oscillating uh and it will be experiencing frictional forces due to the air and on the top of it there is a external agent which is um applying a periodic force on it okay so we want to next take up a damped system a damped forced system okay that's what we will do next